having a beautiful Sunday afternoon. I finally decided to make my video about what inspired me to start a YouTube channel, to create a YouTube channel. Um, what was my motivation behind it all? And I have to say, the main reason I wanted to do this was for Ethan. As you all know, Ethan was born with hypoplastic left heart syndrome, which is a congenital heart defect. Um, I found out about Ethan's defect at my uh, 19th week anatomy scan. At the time, we were in Chicago. So my husband and I went to our appointment to find out, you know, the gender and just overall how our baby was doing. We had his name picked out. It was going to be Ethan. So I ended up texting everybody. I'm like, hey, you know, we're having another boy. Uh, at, after the ultrasound, um, the tech said, okay, well, you know, go ahead and sit tight. We're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and pass the pictures on to the doctor. So my husband and I are in the room excited, you know, we're telling Evan, hey, Evan, you're gonna have a baby brother. You have a baby brother in there. So then we're sitting there and I realize, okay, it's been like 15 minutes and my doctor calls. So I pick up the phone. She says, hey, you know, looks like they found something on the ultrasound. It seems like, you know, uh, the baby's heart might be a little bit smaller than what it should be, but it also can just be that the pictures weren't very clear. So um, we're going to have you go in for another ultrasound somewhere else. Anyway, my husband and I decide to spend the rest of the evening at a park um, to try to just take our minds off of what was really going on and just to pray that it was just the pictures. I ended up scheduling, scheduling my next ultrasound. Um, I go into the hospital and I go alone. Only reason I went alone was because I was under the impression that it wasn't anything major. I walk into this room, it was super dark for one. Um, the screens were much bigger, so I'm laying there and I'm able to look up and, you know, mon watch everything that the tech is scanning. And I believe a tech came in to scan and then a cardiologist came in to scan. And the cardiologist asked me, she's like, did you come to this appointment alone? I said, yeah, you know, I figured it was just going to be, you know, something minor. And she continued scanning and this process is forever and it's quiet and it's dark and I'm super super nervous. After the scans were over um, the cardiologist took me to another room to tell me exactly what she found. It was a cardiologist and a genetic counselor that came in to speak with me and she told me that Ethan had hypoplastic left heart syndrome. This was the first time I ever heard of it and Slowly but surely, she explains to me what was going on, and she told me that, you know, it was 100% fatal. Um, she asked me about the child I had at home, and I told her, you know, Evan was healthy, we didn't have any problems with him. And then um, she started telling me about my options. She gave me three options. The first option was to terminate my pregnancy. The second option was to um, do heart surgery, which was reconstructive repairs. Um, and the last option was palliative care. You know, they were just like, oh, you know, he's not gonna have a good life and the surgeries are tough. He most likely won't survive it. You know, um, think about your child that you have now and what life he would live having a sibling with such, you know, having a sibling with such a terrible, you know, condition. Um, the cardiologist literally said to me, you have one healthy child. You and your husband are very young. You can always try again. I'll never forget that. At that time, I was 20 weeks pregnant and I believe up until 24, 25 weeks, I still had the option to terminate. Uh, this would be done through either um, them inducing me and delivering Ethan or um, a DNC. He told me, well, you know, you have about two weeks to come up with a decision because 
you know, I was already 20 weeks um, and they needed extra time to prepare for whatever the choice was that I was going to make. So I left that appointment feeling so broken, feeling so down, like it was literally one of the worst days of my life. When I left the hospital, I told the doctors that I needed to talk to my husband and let him know. And they ended up um, scheduling another appointment so my husband could come in and pretty much hear it all for himself. My husband, um, at that time, we both disagreed on what to do. I have to say that I never felt so alone in my life. Even though I had, you know, my family and my friends, I felt so alone. I was the one that was pregnant, you know. I was carrying him. I felt like all that pressure was just on me. So my husband, of course, he had a different perspective. He, his main thing was that he didn't want to see his son suffer. And with the surgeries, they were very clear it would not be easy. And, um... Not only did he not want to see Ethan suffer, he didn't want to see Evan suffer as well. After Ethan's diagnosis um, at 20 weeks, I spent a lot of time in prayer. I spent a lot of time alone just thinking, what am I going to do? What is the future going to hold for my son? What should I do? no one could give me the answer. It was hard. It was tough. Uh, I told my OB at the time, um, well, of course, she was informed of the diagnosis, and she was just like the other doctors, pretty much saying that he had no chance of survival, and I should have terminated the pregnancy. I ended up going um, to speak with, I believe, a counselor at another um, facility. Um, the counselor pretty much gave me information and um, different places, different options I had as far as which hospitals would be able to deal with Ethan's case. Uh, I, did, I did a little bit of research on my own. Um, I found that CHOP, the hospital in Pennsylvania, was like the best hospital for a child with Ethan's condition. I, as I was doing research and looking at pictures and YouTube, Google, like, I went through so much of that where I would just sit on the computer for hours trying to, you know, figure out what was the best thing to do. I found Kathy, Kathy Baker. Um, I was able to follow her blog about her son Jake. So I followed along with her story. I ended up sending her a message or an email. Somehow I got to her and she responded right away, like within that day. I heard from her and I have to say that was like a big thing for me like I had one person in the whole wide world that knew exactly how I felt she knew what I was going through um, she had already started her journey with HLHS and you know her family and her son so I was able to talk to her and let her know what was going on with me and our diagnosis and she gave me a little bit of history with them and I finally saw hope. I said, there is a way. After connecting with Kathy, um, I was able to come to the decision that I was going to um, give my son a chance. Not, not only Kathy, but just Kathy, prayer, family, friends, people supporting me. I said, you know what? We are going to do this. This baby is going to come into this world, he's going to have that surgery, and I'm going to do whatever I can to make sure that, you know, he meets me and I meet him. That was my biggest thing. I said, you know what, I may only have a few minutes, a few hours, maybe even a day with Ethan, but it would be the best time of my life. So, anyway, um, we, get, we find out about the Children's Hospital in Wisconsin. And I end up going there for the rest of my um, like OB appointments um, and ultrasounds and different things like that. They were the ones that um, took care of Ethan and I, I guess, from about, I want to say seven months 
to uh, the day I delivered him. So when I ended up telling my old OB about my new plans and dealing with Wisconsin, she, I guess, couldn't believe it. She asked me, she was like, why would you risk your life for a baby that most likely won't survive? And when she said that, that's when I knew. I'm like, I can have nothing to do with this lady. The few days leading into my C-section, I actually had my aunt come from Belize and she came with so much hope and prayer and love and support. I will never forget how much she was there for me. My husband and I left the night before my C-section and um, I remember being super, super nervous. oh my gosh, this is finally happening. All the anxiety and stress and the tears and just heartache that I had experienced through my pregnancy, you know, knowing that I was gonna have this child with such a horrible, you know, heart condition. It was finally happening. I couldn't fall asleep that night. I was so nervous and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. I said, God, show me the way. Just lead me. Wherever you lead me, I'm going to follow. And that's exactly what I did. I ended up falling asleep in prayer. Woke up the next morning. My sister and my aunt came. And um, I remember feeling like really calm I don't know if it was calm or just numb just being so nervous that I literally have n had no more nerve I was scared I was really scared and um, we got ready for the c-section they took me down that was a scary experience but I got through it I'm like, here's my baby that nobody thought, you know, I'd ever get the chance to meet. Or, you know, hear cry. I said, he's finally here. I didn't get the chance to see him. I heard him, but I didn't get to see him. And my husband, you know, left my side and he went over to see him and started taking pictures. And I'm like, you know, how does he look? How's he doing? And my husband just told me, he, he looks okay, he's doing good. The doctors are working on him already. I said, geez, you know, that's when it all started. I didn't get to see him until the following day, right before they took him in for his first open heart surgery. I had to find the strength to get downstairs. After, the, the, after my C-section, I was really sick and I was really tired. I don't know if it was just the medication or me being so anxious all day, the, you know, the night before and such, but um, I couldn't go down to see him the day I had him, but my husband and my sister and my aunt did go down and they took pictures and brought me pictures of him. And the following day I did get to go downstairs, they wheeled me, um, wheeled me down to his room. And the funny thing about it is, I see the pictures and videos, but I guess because I was on so many different medications, I don't even really remember seeing him for the first time. I see the pictures, I know I was there, but I can't remember the moment, the first moment I had with him. And of course it's, it, it's sad and it hurts. But um, the first, the first few days were a blur. For all the mommies out there and all the women, families out there that may be going through this, may have just found out they're having a child with hypoplastic left heart syndrome, or for the families who already had their child and they're just wondering what life has to bring, this is the reason why I'm sharing all of this is because I want to be able to motivate other families and inspire other families to let them know, yes, we all do have different stories, but some stories are great. They're amazing. These children are so resilient. 
you get to meet so many different families. You get to meet amazing doctors and nurses. The team of people you have to support you and help you along the way, it's truly amazing. We were blessed to have worked with the team in Wisconsin. I mean, we continue to work with the team in Wisconsin. All our nurses, the doctors, they are amazing. They truly are. And I've always put God first. I always let him guide me. I leave it in his hands. I do get scared. I, I'm afraid. Sometimes I get really sad, but I know that God will see me through. He always has. Ethan is a blessing. He's your average four-year-old who drives me crazy every once in a while, but he is a blessing. This experience has changed me in so many different ways, which I do plan on sharing with you all. But I just wanted to start with the beginning, the diagnosis, and how that all went down. I can't believe we're this far already. But um, that's why I always say everything I do, I do it one beat at a time, literally. One day at a time. You can't overwhelm yourself with what ifs. Just take your time, stay motivated, and pray. Leave it in God's hands. <sighs> Hopefully you guys continue to journey with us through our experience. And um, hopefully someone out there sees this video, meets, gets to see our family, and they are inspired. Uh, until then, take care, guys. Bye.